Carolyn Keeger of the Penn State Lady Lions. She was addressing the media earlier today, and she's joining us on the set right now, along with McKenna Marisa and Kelly J. Cott. And first, let's look back at last year. It was a big win increase in conference play from the year before. A five-win conference increase is really impressive. Kelly J. Cott, of course, returned. She didn't get to play much last year with an injury. We're going to talk with her about that. And again, they're joining us here. But I think the first thing is the most important thing. This has been a different media day for everybody because the men and the women have been combined. But Kelly, it's been really different different for you this year than last year. Explain yes. why. Well, I'm so happy we already talked about this. <laughs> um, Coach Keeger decided last year during our Zoom media day to disguise herself and ask us very unique questions. And unfortunately, I did not notice <laughs> until the very end. So thank you, Coach, for that. So McKenna, everybody else picked up on this Oh yeah. quickly. Yep, I think so, right? Everyone else? Yeah. And Kelly was just like, well, that lady with a mustache seems nice. She's yeah. just asking weird questions. Yep, and it was Answer funny. Right away. <laughs> it was funny because her mustache was falling off. We were like, oh, how did you not notice that? <laughs> That's a good bit. She was very focused, Mike. Very focused. That's yeah. a coach saving you right mm -hmm. there. Thank that you, is coach. someone having your back. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Yeah. I like that bit. Can we? Can you do that at some other thing? Just oh, absolutely. Wear It'll come a mustache back. and Eric McLaughlin was the name, actually. <laughs> That was it your was. make believe yes, name? Yes, it was. I'm going to Halloween this year as Eric McLaughlin. <laughs> I'll that send you a video. 100% my That's plan. Awesome. Um, okay, let's talk uh, first about last season. At one point, you said to me last season, this season is process over outcome. What did you mean by that, and how did that feel at the end of the season? Well, I think for us, and we talked about this every day, is um, doing a little a lot versus a lot a little. And, you know, just working on our vulnerabilities and harnessing our strengths. And last year, that might have not always looked in the win column uh, to the outside uh, population. But to us, we knew we were getting better every day. We knew we were building a foundation and we knew that eventually those hits that we took or those adversity moments or those losses uh, will be huge gains for us. And uh, hopefully this year they'll, they'll turn around and they'll be pivotal lessons for us. Is that concept still around this year or is it that's what we were last year? We're moving into yeah. a different phase. We have, have a, a new um, concept this year, a mission accomplishment. And um, so for us, the mission is, you know, to get to that NCAA tournament. And what does that look like? And every day is different, but we're trying to attack everything at 100 percent to be able to do that. I think one of the big things is keeping the lady to your left on the court every <laughs> game. How valuable will she be to this team if we can get a full season, no yeah. injuries, no missing games? I mean, you can't even really put it into words. We're so excited that she decided to come back and leave the jersey in a better place and leave on a, a positive note. You know, she's got unfinished business to do, and she's got a very high IQ. She's been to an NCAA tournament. She's a phenomenal leader, and I think uh, it's a lot of inspiration uh, for the players under her. You know, you brought up an interesting point there. You didn't have to come back. You could have held Eric McLaughlin up in her face and said, guess who's not coming back, Eric? Right. <laughs> yes. Why did you want to come back? First and foremost, just the people at Penn State. Coach Keir has done so much for me. Um, McKenna to my left, Anna, Maddie, a lot of notable players and returners. I'm so excited to get back out on the court with them as well. Yeah. All right. I'm told, actually, real quick, there's some breaking news there in my ear. They're telling me we have something that we have to show you guys. I haven't seen this okay. yet, but this is apparently very important. Oh. It's about your roster, I guess. Um, let's see Eric. if we can get it up. There it is. Eric McLaughlin. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Eric. Okay, that's better than I thought. The hat hides the hair. That's yes. not that bad, Kelly. I mean, I, I did my best. Gosh. I did my best. Look at the mustache. Look at the wardrobe, though. It's well, like, it looks... My voice was very deep as well, so that kind of disguised it <laughs> yeah. a little bit. <laughs> yeah, the mustache is a little much. Yeah. That might be a red flag there. But at the hat, I, I'm, it's not as bad as I thought it would be. Thanks for making me feel better about it. I appreciate it. <laughs> Oh, we're teaching her lessons uh, yeah, for the rest love. of her life. This yes. is love. Listen, guys, having fun is more fun, right? <laughs> for sure. Uh, McKenna, oh, yeah. what's it like playing with Kelly? Kelly is um, a great teammate. Uh, she's a hard worker, and she's a great leader. And she has grown so much in her leadership. Um, and she pushes me all the time, and she helps me with her experience that she's carried over um, from her other school as well. And... Um, yeah, it's just she pushes me every day, and she's she's a great teammate, like I said. Was there anything you could do when you were sitting out that you felt like, I got better at this while you weren't playing? For sure. Um, and Coach and I have talked about this all summer long, too, but I was more of a player-coach type of role. Um, so as a leader on the team, I was just trying to use my voice and help the underclassmen. McKenna, where can this team excel this year? What's the aspect of basketball that you're like, if we do our best, we can be as good as anybody at this thing? 
I really think it all goes back to practice and practicing, um, competing and going after it in practice because the practices transfer over to the games. So uh, just going 100% in practice and competing with each other and challenging each other every single day, uh, which is, like I said, it's going to transfer over to the court. So that's it's practice is so important. I want to get to another name we didn't get to yet, Maddie Burke. What impressed yeah. you about her last year? Just her uh, willingness to step up and take big shots and big moments. Um, you know, she wasn't afraid to shoot pull-ups, wasn't afraid to shoot catch-and-shoot shots, and that's rare for a freshman to just have that green light. Uh, I think where we've really pushed her this offseason is to work on her versatility and be more than a three-point shooter, and she's uh, taken that challenge on. And I think, you know, these two would admit when, when we need a shot, they're definitely looking for her, and, and she stretches the floor for them and opens the dropping lanes up for them. Kelly, McKenna, and Carolyn, thank you so much. It was great talking to you. Have a great year, and uh, that'll do it from us. I'm Eric McLaughlin. Over to you, Dave. <laughs> I thought I recognized you from somewhere, Mike. Thanks. Uh, this is the outlook for the Penn State men. New head coach in Micah Shrewsbury. Some additions out of the portal. You see some comings and goings for Penn State, trying to get into the tournament for the first time since 2011, although, of course, they certainly would have made it a couple of years ago, were it not for the pandemic. Very pleased to be joined by the new head coach of the Nittany Lions, Micah Shrewsbury, along with two of his star players, Miles Tread, John Hara. Coach, I want to ask you first, the, the fact that you have experience in this league, we were just with Coach Painter and his players, how does that ease your transition into Penn State? You know, I think it eases the transition of just knowing the league a little bit, right? There's... There's obviously going to be new things with me being the first-time head coach. Uh, but if I was a first-time head coach in the league, I was unfamiliar with it. adds more to it. Uh, so being in the Big Ten, coaching in these arenas, uh, being there before. I've, I've coached, I think, in almost every arena full. Uh, so being able to know what it's going to be like when we're walking in there. But also knowing i got two guys with me that have been through it as well, uh, that really helps ease the transition. So you were with Brad Stevens, of course, at Butler and in the NBA. You've been with Coach Painter, so you have learned from a couple really fabulous head coaches. What have you taken from each one of them that you have integrated into your coaching style? You know, they're both, like, great mentors for me. And, you know, I call them they're more than mentors. They're both great friends. You know, I call them and talk to them all the time, and they help me in a basketball sense. But the one thing they say always is you have to be yourself. And that's what I have to do. I have to be myself, take ideas from them, uh, but put it in my own way. And they have both had a lot of success where they've been. And, it, you know, I'd be a fool to not use that blueprint to really help build our program here and do what we want to do. So uh, how you treat your players, you know, how genuine you are, like how you engage in the community, those are all things that are small parts of – you know, having success, but it's a big part of what we want to do at Penn State. And then we want to put a product on the floor that just makes our university proud. Miles, I'll ask you first. John, I want to get your response as well, but describe Coach Shrewsbury's style. Well, we're playing very fundamental basketball. He's harping on discipline and, um, you know, just striving for perfection. You know, every, nobody's going to be perfect. Nobody, Everybody's going to make mistakes. But, you know, as long as you're playing hard and, you know, being playing with discipline, good things will happen. John? Yeah, I would say uh, Coach has been harping on team first, improve daily. Hear it every day before we start practice. And I think that's what he's about, being a great teammate. Uh, put your team first and then every day improve. Uh, push each other as teammates to improve daily. Prove uh, as a player on yourself, get up extra shots. That will only improve the team. You know, it's interesting. You hear a lot of people talk about you get 1% better every day or kind of formulas like that. And I'm being serious here. Like, how do you gauge that? How do you feel like, okay, I got better today? How do you how do you look yourself in the mirror and say, did I get better? Yeah, I think, uh, well, your practice jersey, how, how soaked it is after a nice hard <laughs> practice. I think that that's a good telltale sign. And then also film. Coach has uh, uh, shown us film every day before practice. We're trying to learn uh, the concepts that he's put into place and films is a great great sign to learn and from your mistakes and grow as a player how would you describe the style of play miles what, what can we expect on both ends from penn state basketball we're going to compete we're going to compete every single night i think we're going to um 
defend the ball very well, and we're just going to get out and run, play in, the, uh, play in transition, and make a lot of plays. What's your formula for winning at Penn State? You know, what Coach Chambers was pretty clear was Philadelphia, right? That, that he really wanted to go into Philly and establish a recruiting foothold. And again, it, it bugs me. I mean, I know you didn't get to play in the tournament in, in 2020, but you guys made the tournament. You were an NCAA tournament team. So to that extent, it worked, right? Kind of that was a good formula for winning at Penn State. But there are lots of different formulas yeah. for winning. So what's yours? You know, my formula for winning uh, is really a part of finding people that fit Penn State, right? We, we want to keep the best players in state. Like, you can win with kids from your backyard. Uh, but I want to find the best fits. And whether that be Philly, whether that be Pittsburgh, D.C., Baltimore, Ohio, Indiana, Alaska, we want to find the best fits for Penn State. The next and Trajan Langdon. Is that's right. <laughs> Whoever it may be, if, if the next Trajan Langdon is a great fit for us and he fits how we play and he loves getting a great education, uh, you know what, we'll take him at Penn State. But, you know, I'm proud to have these guys with me, right? They're great examples of that. Like, I don't have to go far when we bring recruits in to show them, you know, guys that love this school, guys that love this university, guys that have had success here. I got two guys sitting next to me that I can point to and say, this is what you can be. We understand in this day and age of college athletics, you don't have to stay when there's a coaching transition, right? You could leave and, and say, I'm going to go find a different place to play. I'm interested from both of you, what was it about Coach that convinced you to stay? My faith in the university never wavered whatsoever. I had a, a love for the school, and since my sophomore year in high school when I committed to the school, I, I just fell in love with it, and it, 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 that never changed. And I always, my father always taught me to be adaptable to any situation. And, you know, no matter who the coach was, I feel like, being at Penn State was the mold, and however the, the mold went from there, then I just follow suit. John? Yeah, Penn State is a great place, great community. I love it. And then getting to know Coach Shrews over the past couple months, I mean, this man loves his family. Uh, he has his family around all the time. His kid kind of made, upset me. His kid works out at 6 a.m. every day. And he, once he told me that, I kind of got upset. I'm like, so this high school is working out, and I'm not. He's, he's beating me to the workout. But uh, he, he's showing me videos of his kids. I mean, I think that's what it's about, having having a leader that values something important. And uh, fa family's always important. It's funny you bring that up, because Jim Ferry said to me last year, I was asking him about you before I did one of your games, and he said he is the most disciplined human being on planet Earth. That was what he said about you. How does that manifest itself? Tell us what's what do you do that's so disciplined? Yeah, I mean, I heard uh, from previous coaches your your habits determine your life. If you don't have good habits, good luck trying to have a good life. So I just took that kind of ran with it. Um, you gotta have good habits. You gotta get in lifts. You gotta shoot the ball. You gotta keep working hard to improve your game. I mean, I know, I know I'm not the I joke with one of our staff members, Brian Snow. I know I'm not the five-star recruit, so if I want to compete in a league like the Big Ten, uh, better have good habits, better be disciplined. How does that manifest itself from what you see as a teammate? John's the best teammate I've ever had. Like, how so? Bar none. Why? He 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 does everything the right way, even if it's like when we were running sprints and like you never have ever worried about John starting early before the whistle. In a, in a race, he's not going to cheat to win a race. He's not going to. He's not, he's going to overstep the line to make sure that he touches the line. He's going to go above and beyond for everybody on our team. He's a leader, a natural leader, and he leads by example better than anyone I've ever seen. Wow, that's high praise. Yeah. That's yeah. pretty good. Nice smile. Uh, how about some of the uh, other players that, that we're familiar with in Big Ten? I mean, Seth Lundy has shown flashes to me of at times being one of the best players in the league, and then he can go games where he disappears. How do you get the best out of Seth Lundy every day? You know, we're working on him becoming better and more consistent. But like you said, he's done it, right? He, he scored, you know, 30-plus points at Maryland last year. He scored 25 as a freshman against us in Mackey Arena. Um, so he's got the ability to do it. And we want to continue to work on him every day, becoming an everyday guy. He works as hard as anybody. Right? He, he's, he's an everyday guy. He gets in the gym. He stays after practice. He works hard in the weight room and everything he does. 
Now we're going to watch film. We're going to keep growing, keep developing, because I think he can be one of the best players in our league. I'm interested in one of your transfers, Jalen Pickett, conference player of the year. I mean, anytime you're a conference player of the year, you're, you're doing something right. How does this game translate to the Big Ten? I knew Jalen was going to be a good player when I talked to him, when we were recruiting him. And uh, he was finishing almost my sentences and my thoughts uh, about the game of basketball. He's a high IQ player, uh, but he's got more to his game than just that. He, he makes a lot of people better. He's going to make us better. He's going to get these guys easier shots, and he's going to be able to score on his own. So he's somebody we're going to really lean on. But he's got experience as well, right? He's, he's a senior. He's played three years of college basketball. He's going to join these guys in, in our leadership. We're not going to have a leadership void. Uh, we got a lot of guys that have played a lot of games. Uh, they, they're not afraid to get on each other and push each other and make sure that we are ready each and every day. And, you know, along with that, you know, a guy like Sam Sessom's in the same way and in the same light. Like, we have some experience of guys who've gone into Big Ten arenas and played. Now we need to learn each other quickly and then be ready to go when it's time to tip. We have no inexperienced guys, right? I mean, no freshmen on the roster. That's, that's crazy. You don't see that very often. Uh, really a pleasure to have you uh, up here as a head coach now. Mike Shrewsbury, really, really good. It's been fun to follow your career and excited to see what you guys can do this year. Miles, John, thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great Appreciate year. It. As we move on, we turn our attention.